word to vec basically is useful for converting a word, or there's also a doc to vec, a word or a sentence or sometimes an entire document, to a vector representation. And the important thing is that similar words are going to be have a similar value as vectors. So in other words, floating point values. So for example, a frog and tree might be used together very frequently in sentences. So frog and tree might have similar floating point values. word to vec is actually in the GenSim library. So we're going to import from gensim.models, import word to vec. And that's with a capital W and a capital V. We're going to apply word to vec on the sentences. By the way, you have to pass in sentences for this because what it's looking at is the context of the words in that sentence. And if, there, if you pass in words, there's basically no context to look at. Everything's just broken down into single word tokens. So you have to pass in sentences to the word to vec, and then we'll analyze it. So we have uh, the M Emma vector, which is Jane Austen's Emma, and then the leaves vector, which is Walt Whitman's leaves poem. And then we're going to look for most similar words to pain, the top six words. And we can see as we print them out, we get different answers for each one of them. These are not necessarily synonyms. What they are is words that are used in similar context to the word pain. So person, favorable, gee, why is favorable used in a similar context as pain? But it is, so it's not necessarily a synonym. And you can see the similarity rating here, 0 0.9987, it calculates all this. Word to vec calculates this for, for the word that we passed in. And then you can see there's a different context in Walt Whitman's poem Leaves. Uh, very different context for the word pain. So even, moment, hence, without, separate, and no. And by the way, the bigger the text is that you pass in, probably the more relevant these, these words that it finds are going to be. If there's only a single instance of the word that you pass in in that text, then you may not be getting very relevant similarity words. Now let's do a work, word to vec exercise on the Bible. So we can get the King James Bible from Gutenberg. We can request the Bible-KGV, King James Version, dot text. And we're going to tokenize it by sentences. And then we're going to assign that to Bible sense variable. And then we will get the stop words. So we do exactly the same thing we did above. We get all the English stop words. And then here we're going to take out in one handy little list comprehension, we're going to strip out all of the punctuation and all of the stop words. And we're going to assign that to the list Bible. And then we vectorize that by passing it into word to vec. And we assign it to the, the return value to the Bible vec. Now we can just print out similar words. So using Bible vec, we can print out most similar to God, or most similar to creation, or really to any word we want. And we can see the similar words that we get that it finds within the Bible. And this is a pretty large text, the Bible. So we get pretty similar words here that are uh, at least relevant. And doc2vec can actually be used to compare documents for similarity. Uh, that's one way. Uh, probably a better way, actually, is bag of words. So using the bag of words and using term frequency and inverse document frequency gives you, I think, a better comparison between documents than doc2vec does. But doc2vec is a separate and different way of, of computing similarity of documents. Now let's look at k-means clustering. So this is a machine learning library, and it's included in NLTK. So we're going to import NLTK.cluster. We're going to import the k-means cluster and Euclidean distance. There are a lot of different distance measurements, and we're going to use the Euclidean, Euclidean distance measurement. And in this example, actually, we're just going to use um, integer arrays rather than words simplify our example. So we're going to set up a vector. It's a NumPy array, and it's basically a collection of integer pairs, or you could think of them as points, x, y values. And then we're going to start out by assigning some mean values. And what the k-means algorithm does is that it goes through a number of different iterations. It's going to, you're going to use these for a starting point, but it's going to recalculate these centroids for our two different clusters. 
and it's going to recalculate these centroids each time. So this is this will use the starting point 4, 3, and 5, 5 as a starting point, but as it reassigns and points to different clusters, and then it'll recalculate the centroid of those clusters to try and find the most accurate centroids and the most most accurate clustering. So obviously, the more iterations you do, the more accuracy you get in calculating the actual centroids or the actual means of these clusters. So we can call k-means cluster. This is two. That means we're going to have uh, two clusters. And we want Euclidean distance is our distance measurement. And initially, we're going to use these points as the just really just randomly selected uh, centroids. And then we run the cluster and we assign the result to clusters. So you can see when we print out the result, these are the vectors that we clustered, which is what we started with. And we clustered them as 0, 0, and 1, 1. So we have two different clusters. There's a 0 cluster and a 1 cluster. So the first two points, 2, 1, and 1, 3, were assigned to the 0 cluster. And the second two points, 4, 7, and 6, 7, were assigned to the 1 cluster. And that's what that means. And then the two centroids, or what we'll call means or centroids, I like to think of them as centroids of that cluster, we have 1.5 and 2, and 5 and 7. So in this example, we're going to do two clusters. We're also going to use Euclidean distance, and we're going to do 10 repetitions. And we'll pass in our vectors, and we create the clusters. And then when we're done, we're going to assign the, the means, or the um, calculated centroids, to this variable called centroids. And we print out clustered these points as these are the clusters that we ended up with. Again, we have two clusters. The first two points were assigned to the 0 cluster, and then the next two were assigned to the 1 cluster, and then 0 and then 1. So 0 0.31 is assigned to cluster number 1. And then we can see our two centroid points here. And then if we want to classify a new vector, we can set a vector, let's say, 2 comma 2. And we just classify that. We do cluster.classify, and then pass in that vector. And it classifies it into the zeroth group. And if we want to visualize that, this actually helps a lot to see how the points are visualized uh, using matplotlib. And this is just a scatter plot. Using a list comprehension, I iterated through the points and picked out the ones that have index of zero in the clusters array. So that tells us these are the zero cluster points, and we're going to paint them blue. And then these are the one cluster points, and we're going to paint them red. So you can see our three blue points and our three red points. And then what we also did is the centroids we painted orange. So we assigned all the x and y values to xc and yc. We painted them orange, and then we show the plot. So this is our centroid for the blue points. This is our centroid for the red points. So you can see how k-means clustering has picked out these three points and said these three are a cluster and the three red points are a cluster. And then it calculated the centroids. It looks like pretty accurately. So that wraps up this video on Natural Language Toolkit in Python. I hope this is helpful. I'll post this Jupyter Notebook on my GitHub site so you can download it and play around with it. And I hope in the next video to show you how to use sentiment analysis. I'm Joe James. Thanks for watching.